Hi friends, it's me Keisha and I'm here with my all tea, all shade, Real Housewives of Potomac season six, episode one review. I am back. I needed the rest, you guys. I was exhausted after getting out all of those boxes, the release of my newest novel, It Was All a Dream, which by the way, debuted at number one in three different categories on Amazon's bestseller list. Get it, bitch. Ooh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The links will be down below if you want to order yourself a copy via Kindle, Nook, or Paperback. Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody who already purchased a book or who purchased a book box. Thank you so, so much. Um, my birthday boxes will be out next. Um, but let's get into tonight's review of Potomac. The bitches are back and they came back guns a blazing. The Atlanta girls at this point just really need to step their pussy up. They really honestly do because the Potomac girls are really showing they black asses and I am here for it. So we start off the episode with Smart Water. <laughs> for all of my new viewers. We over here at the Color Me Pink channel call Wendy Osefo Smart Water because she is what? Shaped like my smart water bottle. But homegirl must have saw my reviews because she wouldn't got that thing done, honey. And so she did the Doja Cat challenge and as an invite to a nude party that she's having because Smart Water went and got her titties done, her nose done, looks like she got a little bit of filler, and she got her ass done. But the only thing that she is copping to is having her titties done. And I'm like, why won't you just cop to the rest like we all know you got your ass done and something done to your face? Like, cosmetic surgery is not taboo anymore. Like, that's just like people go get lunchtime procedures. Like, we all know you had something done. Just cop to it. Like, all of that extra was just getting on my nerves. And you know we don't see it for smart water over here. No way. So, Giselle, a.k.a. Turkey Neck. Uh, is in the west wing of her hood home not feeding her children I'm pretty sure if it was a nigga there she would fed him or fed him but since it ain't no nigga there she can be the mama that she really is so um, Robin and Juan are building a new home with what funds I really don't know uh, did she pay her taxes is what I need to know where they getting money from to get a, a fucking home but mm, you know them some scammers over there so, Candias, because <laughs> you know Candace spells her name C A N D I A C E. I don't know why that I is in there. So, her name is technically pronounced Candias. Uh, has moved into a new home. She finally moved out of her mother's home. Congratulations that she finally grew up. Um, Ashley and my boy Dean are back. It is so good seeing little Dean doing the hiatus. He wanted me to tell you guys that he started a new tech company out in Silicon Valley. You know, he took a little slight hit because of COVID. You know, some of his stocks, you know, took a small plummet. But, um, you know, he invested really early, really quickly into the, uh, what is it, the, the, the Dodge coin, the Doge coin, whatever that, that Elon Musk coin. So he got his money. He got his money. He fared really well. Things are going really good in his portfolio. Dean wanted me to let you guys know that. So, um... Ashley is preparing for baby number two with Gullum. And for those of you who do not know who Gullum is when I reference it, Gullum is a character from the Lord of the Rings French <laughs> franchise. And Gullum is um, her husband, Ashley's husband. This is Gullum. This is Ashley's husband. <laughs> Don't Ashley husband look just like Gollum? Look at him. Look at him. Look at Ashley husband. Look at his ass. Look at his ass. That is Gollum. So that is why I call that man Gollum because he looked just like that goddamn preacher. Okay, so she is expecting another baby with this cheating ass old ass monster, but she like it. I love it. So we also find out that they haven't had sex in four months and she's, you know, worried that he was going to cheat on her again and this, that, and the third. And I was like, well, bitch, your old ass keep on fucking around and having babies by this mucus looking ass man. Um, so that's all up on you. I, I gave up on Ashley ass. Um, she and Gollum have a conversation and she tells him that she just wants them to be very open about their feelings this time around so she could know exactly where he's at. 
since she hasn't been able to be, you know, sexual with him. And he was like, okay, I'm going to tell you. I'm like, that's the same shit he said last time. That man going to do what the fuck you want to do. So, Turkey Neck visits Condias, uh, dressed like she's going to a job interview at U.S. Bank. I mean, the fashions for Turkey Neck is just not there. Like, gobble, gobble. Um, <laughs> Oh, the hell. But that's what I literally think of every time I see Turkey Neck. She just be <laughs> that woman cannot dress for shit. So uh Kandias, uh husband's kids are there because they got stuck there doing COVID. So we finally get to meet his uh babies. Um, we get to see that uh, he didn't have a baby by a black woman. She was Mexican, Puerto Rican or something. Another. Um, so, Candy Eyes shows Turkey Neck around her home. And her mama got a room at their new house. And I'm just like, what is going on here? Like, I know the mama live a little bit further away from her. But, like, why does your mama need a room at your house? Like, that shit is weird, bro. But, anywho, it ain't my house. Whatever. Um... So, Turkey Neck says that things between her and Jamal aren't working because of the panorama. And Candy Eyes ain't buying it and neither or none of us. We all know that that relationship wasn't even real in the first place. He was doing her solid and pretending to be her nigga so she could have a storyline. But, okay, girl. So, Candy Eyes even wonders, did being embarrassed at the reunion change things for um turkey neck because you know monique and karen did a michael jordan scotty pippen on her ass and tag teamed and brought the the uh witch down ding dong the witch is dead um so candy eyes was like so karen was just talking crap um uh, and uh no i'm sorry giselle said that and so turkey neck was like she's a hater fuck her and everything she said candy eyes ain't fooling with karen you know since she felt like Karen had Monique's back more than hers last season. And I was like, she was on the winning team. She was on the, the right side of uh, the law. She was on Jesus' side and not the devil's. Because ain't nobody over here playing with you and Lucifer. So, uh, I just want to say that that McDonald's arch eyeshadow look that Kandias had going on in her confessional was rude it was inappropriate i was feeling very attacked and disrespected um i my eyes were visually impaired i don't understand why we had to witness that please never do that to your eye shadow a look ever again so uh karen is talking to old ass ray about renewing their vows for the 25th anniversary and i must say that karen's face was beat to the gods whoever did her makeup you did that so Karen and her confession was like 25 years is the institution. Some people can't get a man out their phone to show, up, to show up in person. And I was like, shots fired at Turkey Neck. Hold up, y'all. My postmates is here. Hold up. Kyrie! Go downstairs. I'm so ghetto. <laughs> Uh, let me tell my postmates that my son is coming down. My son is about to you downstairs. Okay, back to the review. Okay, dog guy. Um, Ray, however, wants a small affair, but Karen doesn't. Like, she wants to go all out if she's going to be renewing her vows. And I think after everything that they've gone through, Karen fucking deserves it. I mean, she had to go through bankruptcy and lawsuits and the nigga telling her he don't know if he love her and being accused of him cheating on her, this, that, and the third. Like, get that woman the, the fucking vow renewal that she deserves. So, um, Karen also says that, you know, she's only going to invite people that, you know, genuinely love and care about them, that she's genuinely friends with, and that does not include Turkey Neck, because, you know, Turkey Neck is always talking out the side of her mouth about Karen, and she's sick of it. So, Turkey Neck tells Condi Eyes that, you know, I didn't bother Karen last year. She was going through enough for her husband not loving her and not liking his ding dong. She wants to make up lies, but I'm going to tell the truth. And I was like, girl, did nobody make up lies? lies about you and you had already been started with Karen and Karen had to uh, rag tag that ass real motherfucking quickly and I was like 
what truth are you about to tell about Karen? What truth that we already don't the fuck know? We already know um, it had leaked to the blogs anyway that um, this season uh, Giselle was about to try to come with this storyline that Karen is a drunk. And we saw that that was her first go-to line later on in the episode. But I don't bit more believe that that woman is no fucking drunk or no more than the rest of them hoes. And if she is, she hiding it very well. So, um, but you see that this is like her ammo. Like, we've done the drunk storyline with who? Didn't they try to pull the drunk storyline on Ashley? They tried to do the drunk storyline on Monique. Like, they try to recycle the same drama over and over again, them hating ass bitches. So, um, Candy Eyes then says, there's a lot of stuff that could be said about Karen. Girl, you need to shut your ass up like really shut the hell up because we still don't like you joe funny looking ass looking like something that came up out the sea so karen in her confession was like god forbid she turns the mirror on herself talking about turkey neck um the ladies then get wendy's aka smart waters video invite where she up here looking like joanne the scam of tiptoeing <laughs> that raggedy ass fur like i don't give a fuck what wendy do she can get all the cosmetic surgery she wants she is still going to forever be smart to water <laughs> so robin and juan go out for drinks at a juice bar and she takes him to this juice bar to congratulate him on his successful season um being a coach at whatever university he's coaching and i was like you gonna take this man to get a juice at a juice bar as a congratulations like robin can't never do nothing right your broke ass can't never do shit the fuck right like i don't understand what juan sees in this woman she is just a nigga in a dress. It's obvious she like women. Like she she doesn't have a romantic sexy bone in her body. Like you take your nigga to a juice bar as a congratulations and buy this man a seven dollar drink. One I really feel like now that we know even more about their background and that one um basically was pretty much like abandoned by his family and was raised by hers or whatever like it's more of a comfort level thing between them too because i just don't see it i don't get it like why is he still there with her ass maybe it's because of the kids maybe it's because of time maybe because he is just like he knows she gonna be there but other than that like what is it jesus christ so um uh I'll go back to Smart Water. I noticed that she got that Jermaine Jackson line and fix. Hallelujah. And when she sent her invite to all the ladies, Ashley told Dean to close his eyes. And that baby closed his eyes. Because Dean was like, girl, I ain't got time to be dealing with this lady. I'm going to try to work on my next startup. Ain't nobody got time for this bullshit. So back to Robin and Juan. So they don't have a wedding date planned yet because of COVID, no, because y'all ain't got no money. It's the whole lot of money in this motherfucker. Not for Juan and Robin. Um, <laughs> so, um, the kids, we find out been eating Chick-fil-A every day because her lazy ass want to sleep in the bed all day, every day, and not start her day until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And Juan straight up tells her that this is a fucking turn off. I'm like, you finally got this nigga to ask you to marry his ass again. Even though he gave you a motherfucking cubic zirconia or one of them uh, Morganite rings or whatever. Them uh, fake ass rings or whatever that you get from Cage Jewel or, Zell, or Zells. But you finally got him to propose to you. And this is what you turn around and do. Like, Robin is a constant fuck up. Like, I just don't get it. Um... I'm like, what happened to you over here building houses and shit? Like, why you ain't renovating um, Turkey Neck's new house? Like, why you ain't put on your vest and your boots, bitch, and get to fucking work? So, uh, she was like, you know, she's overwhelmed because of COVID. And it's just the days turn into, you know, the same day. And she, when she gets overwhelmed, she shut down. Now, I can understand maybe she's depressed. But I don't even think that it's really so much depression with Robin. Because this is the same Robin that we've seen since season one. Robin is just, sorry to say, pathetic. Since season one, this woman has just been a wet blanket. Like, it's like watching Eeyore from um, Winnie the Pooh. Like, she is just a sad-ass case of a woman. Like, Jesus Christ. 
And I mean, honestly, just the fact that Juan is an attractive man, but it don't say too much about him that he even want a woman like this. Because what is it about you that you would even want to be with somebody like Robin? Like, I just don't get it. Um... So, he goes on this tangent about wanting another kid. He really wants a girl, this, that, and the third. And she was like, oh, it would be cute. I was like, being cute is about the only thing it's going to be. Because having your lazy ass as a mama, what the hell are you going to teach your ass? How to be a fuck up? So, we then go back to Kandia's home. We get to meet Chris's kids. His daughter, Naya, and his son, um, Rio, Roberto, some bullshit. Um, he also got another kid with somebody else, child. You know, he just been slinging that white, black penis all over uh Washington, D.C. or wherever the fuck they from. All I got to say is that little girl Nia is going to be a serial killer. I'm afraid of her. I don't understand why they was letting that child walk around with a blue mustache on her lip. It's just something very weird about her. I would lock my door at night if I was Candy Eyes. She reminds me of, remember that um movie Charlize Theron did where she won the Oscar because she played that uh crazy ass serial killer that was killing people up and down the highway? That's that little girl. Uh, <laughs> so Candy Eyes still don't know if she want to have kids. And you know, I mean, remember she would be his fourth baby mama. Like like, or third baby mama or something, whatever. But I'm like, it's obvious that girl don't want to have kids. And that's a whole nother fucked up ass relationship. So, Robin's boys, a.k.a. the Menendez twins, because them little boys is crazy and bad as hell too, help her pick out an outfit for Smart Waters' event. Um, Over at Smart Waters' house, the table decor is gorgeous. I will say that. Um, Smart Water then gonna give her boys one of her titty cupcakes. And I was just like, this is totally inappropriate, but it's some stupid ass shit that I would have did. So Turkey Nick arrives to the party and she did not follow the rules as always. It was everybody supposed to wear shades of nude. This bitch wore brown. Um, I know brown is considered in the nude family, but she knew what the fuck nude meant. Um sitting up here coming down there looking like a damn turkey leg. So, Turkey Neck and Robin peep the table settings and sees that someone by the name of Mia is going to be there. Now, Mia is the new cast member. So, Turkey Neck says to Robin, I don't know that bitch. Do you know that bitch? And I'm like, why are you calling this woman a bitch? You don't even know her. But I'm pretty sure she already saw pictures of Mia and was already feeling intimidated because we all know Giselle Stilo. So, Karen and Mia ride together, and she is absolutely stunningly gorgeous. She has multiple businesses. She's just a beautiful woman. Karen and Smartwater, we find out, squash their beef. Um, so, they're trying to start uh, fresh and new. Right now, in real time, they're, the, the group is divided in half. You have Turkey Neck, Robin, Condi Eyes, and then we have a friend of the show, um, this Indian-looking girl. Um, they're all one team, and then you have Karen, then you have you have Karen, Mia, Ashley, and Wendy, who are all homegirls. So the group is divided right now in real time as we speak. So um Wendy tells them that Candy Eyes isn't coming, that she called her like 10 minutes prior to the event start started stating that she wasn't gonna come because she had the runs but robin think that she was just uncomfortable with seeing karen and i believe that more so than i believe 10 minutes prior that you realize that you got the runs girl by out your punk pussy ass so karen is actually excited however to see kind eyes because she hasn't seen her in a long time and wants to like just see where she's at mentally so they can just squash everything so um Karen even tells Mia that Giselle has never received the younger, beautiful newcomer well, which we all know as true. So that ain't no lie, that ain't no, you know, shade, that ain't starting shit, that just is what it is. So Karen and Mia arrive, and Giselle looked like she had steam coming out of her ears as soon as she saw not only Mia, but Karen, like, she was intimidated right off the bat. It was Monique all over again. If you paid attention to her mannerisms, how she looked Mia up and down, and then she turned around and like looked over at Robin, like you see this bitch, like baby, she cannot take it, honey. She cannot take it. So, um, 
Karen doesn't speak the turkey neck and she of course feels some type of way about this. So turkey neck and her confessions like uh she needs to apologize. As soon as she saw me, she should apologize and said I bumped my head. Ray don't love me. And I was like, at least her husband, if he don't love her now, at least he loved her at one point. Cause can we say the same about Jamal? Cause Jamal was cheating on you from what I know from day one. Like, girl have several seats so mia tells them that you know she has not one but two homes soon as she said she had two homes baby did y'all peep the look on turkey neck's face she was looking like oh this shit again baby she was feeling some type of way so uh mia's husband we find out is 68 years old and um she has four grandchildren with him uh she doesn't know math because she don't know how many years apart they are because but she says that she's 36 years old i don't bit more believe that woman 36 and she is 36 and shit i'm i'm 95 god damn it because i'm about to be 40 and i don't know if it's because all the uh plastic surgery she did on her face but uh mia look like she a good 45 a good looking 45 but i don't believe she know 36 if she 36 all right girl but you need to leave yourself alone if you 36 stop fucking with your face so um i really want to see how she looked before all the plastic surgery um she's a beautiful woman um smart water then gives this long ass speech about the nude party and it's so long-winded but she finally reveals them titties that she calls happiness <sighs> like you couldn't come up with a better name than that really girl um so robin was like let me see the butt because i know you got it done and she was like i got some tweaks girl we all know you got your ass done anybody with two eyes can see that you got your ass done you were literally shaped like this water bottle your first season last season now you have a little hump in the back girl sit down somewhere just be honest about it like you being honest about you getting your titties done why not just be honest about everything else like oh i just do not like her um, so Robin was like, you know, it's something different about your face too. And uh, Karen peeped it as well. And I was like, it's, it's obvious she got her nose done and it looked like she got a little filler in her cheeks. So Mia was like, is that all you had done is your boobs? Wasn't a shady question. She didn't say it with an attitude or like any underlining shade. And here comes smart water Thompson. I had other tweaks. What have you have done? Cause it looks like you've had a lot done. What? come from like all the girl did was ask you a question me a better bitch to me because i would have been like hold up sis i don't know what's the attitude about it. i don't know if it's because you got low self-esteem if you insecure still about yourself bitch all i did was ask your manly looking ass a motherfucking question or put looking like book of tea oh ugly ass <laughs> like girl don't play with me like girl whitney have several please have several like all that was just so unnecessary but mia took it in stride she was like you know i own my shit i had this this that 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 been done including my clip and everybody was like oh my god she told us she had her clip done we just met her oh girl shut up so karen asked where kind eyes is and karen was like uh you know they tell her why she didn't come and Robin, you know, tells her that she thinks that she didn't come because she was afraid to run in her. Karen was like, you know, I'm not going to deny that she was deeply hurt last season. You know, I'm going to give her time, but I do want to have a conversation with her. Like, she just want to squash things. So Ashley was like, I don't know if we'll get to a good place either. She was like, you know, we just don't mesh her and Condias. So Giselle was like, we all know I can't stand Karen. And Karen was like, the feeling is mutual. So Giselle was like, I'll just tell your truth. And Karen was like, you don't want this. Now, Karen tried to warn this hoe. She gave her a warning. You don't want it with me, turkey neck. Gobble, gobble. Gobble, 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 gobble. <laughs> you don't want it over here. So Giselle didn't take heed, though, because I was like, Giselle cannot fucking read. And Giselle only can read when you give her a script. Other than that, she's not light on her feet. So Giselle was like, um your drunk truth your cheating truth your broke truth and karen was like you want to talk about your fiery box that's on fire that's why you can't keep a man do you want to do that and i was like oh shit bitch you got a fire crotch she lizzie lohan in your ass so um y'all see the first thing that uh turkey neck said was your drunk truth remember i told you she's gonna go along with the storyline this season that karen is a drunk so the lady's like uh what's a fiery box and smart water, smart water was like you talking about her coochie on fire karen was like yes she has a hot box tell everybody what's going on between them legs of yours and then here come her dyke ass friend 
rapping, talking about some, you her gynecologist? And I'm like, girl, shut your Bob the Bill looking ass up. Shut up. So Giselle, her confession was like, I have a wop box and hers is dry. I would rather have a wop box than a dry box. Girl, sit your old ass down talking about some wop box. Girl, you got a kid's meal. <laughs> A chicken nugget meal. That's why uh, Jamal has don't want your ass. So uh, Giselle was like, she's obsessed with my coochie because we all know the ding dong at her house is broken. I'm like, first of all, we're grown. Say dick, bitch. It's a dick. So uh, Karen was like, you will not disrespect my husband when your ding dong is in everybody else's vaginas. You don't have a man. You are a broken whore from Hampton University. and Everybody knows it. And that's why we went to Sing Sing. And I was like, no, she didn't call her a broken whore from Hampton University. You better read her for filth, Karen Huger. And then she said, and that's why we went to Sing Sing. Y'all know Sing Sing is jail. So, are we about to learn some tea that Giselle has to be locked up before? Baby, next week episode can't get her fast enough, but Karen decimated her and cleared that hoe. Giselle does this to herself every time, like... Going up against Karen is just, you're going to fail every time. Karen was born to read and shade. She's a witch. Look at that nose. <laughs> she was born to be a bitch. Like, Giselle just ain't got it in her. Giselle wants to be the, the, you know, the queen bee, wants to be that shady girl. But you ain't got it. You ain't going to get it because you ain't got it. All right? Child, I will say that I give the season premiere of Potomac an A+. Plus. The girls came with it. They did not hesitate. They did not waste time. This is what we need moving forward with Atlanta. Atlanta, Potomac has taken the crown. Atlanta was on top for, what, 11, 12 seasons out of all the franchises. They were the number one franchise. But I really think with this season that Potomac is going to officially, and the ratings, um not uh, Atlanta off its number one throne because the girls is bringing it. They got a really good cast here. They got current new beefs. The storylines are still interesting. I like the addition of Mia. I can't wait to meet this other young lady that's going to join as a friend. But um, Atlanta, y'all better step y'all pussy up. And they really need to do something over there next season with New York. I like Ebony on the show, but as of late... Um, it's too much talk about politics and race. I love, you know, the glitz and the glamour and the shadiness and the drunkenness of it all with New York. And I feel like Ebony really doesn't fit into that. Like, I like the other girl that's on her, the other black um lady on New York. But I feel like next season, if they do bring Ebony back, bring Ebony back, bring Brishon, the other uh, uh, black girl, bring Dorinda back, of course. I know for a fact Dorinda's going to be back next season. Bring Dorinda back. Bring Tinsley back. Since T Tinsley's engagement didn't work, her dumb ass should have never quit the showcase ass in the first place. But that'll make it a bigger, better show. That's the cast we need moving forward for New York. But yeah, Potomac, y'all did that. Let me know what y'all thought to about tonight's episode down below in the comments section. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell button. I will see you guys on my next review. Love you. Bye.